Hi peeps, hope everyone's okay. Um, let's get straight to it. Let's have a look what I'm on. Right, everyone, this is the Royal Enfield Scram 411. So I've already done a bit of a walk around on the Himalayan. So let's have a look around this. Let's see where this differs. And as always, once I've done this little walk round, don't forget to stay for the test ride. Let's see what it rides like. What do you think about the red and white paint job? I don't know, I think it's growing on me. There's quite a few colours to choose from. That's one thing with Royal Enfield at the minute. They are releasing bikes and some of them have got loads of colour options. Which is not like other manufacturers that release about two different colours. So yeah, they're doing well on that front as far as the personalisation goes. Nice wheels. I'm sure you could do a bit of green laning but only basic stuff. From my initial ride the suspension's quite hard so you'd be fine on gravel tracks but I wouldn't want to take it on anything more than that. Quite an old school scrambler look to it. But I think uh, I think Royal Enfield have done really well with the styling. Not a massive fan of those. I think they're a bit cheapy looking, if I'm honest. Everything else I do really like. So the exhaust I think is quite nice as well. You know what Europe's done to motorcycles and how they've affected the exhaust. Normally they're like twice the width of that. Just yeah it looks it looks nicer it's not as bulbous there are a few other youtubers have had a look at these bikes they've complained about the welds being a little bit poor yeah they're not brilliant they're not brilliant it's a cheap bike so you're not going to get brilliant and also, I've noticed that like this bike has only got about 120 miles on thereabouts, and this once silver exhaust has already gone to that copper colour because of the heat that's gone through it. But it it doesn't take anything away from the bike. I think it looks pretty cool still. One difference from the Himalayan, so that's got the 21 inch front wheel. This has only got a 19. It is more robust bias this and it does make a difference on the road very very basic you know we do have a fuel gauge which is good because there's still bikes that are releasing bikes without fuel gauges which baffles me we've got gear indicators and we've got your speedo this i want to say alleged sat nav because i've never had one work on me yet i'm not even going to bother trying on that one and as far as buttons go this side you've just got your horn indicators high beam low beam and your flash okay they are basic and this side engine cut off hazards and your yeah, start so yeah there's not a lot really to to go on about with this bike because there's no modes or anything to speak of but styling wise just i just think it looks so much nicer than the himalayan a bit less kit on it but i think it looks better for it that'll do us for the walk round i'm not going to go over all the facts and figures and all that stuff because there's enough of that online already i'm quite late to the party to have a go on this one but i'll tell you what i like about it during the test ride i'll tell you what i don't if i do find anything so make sure you join me for that so what do you think about that then? Now personally, I, I am a big fan of the Himalayan. I, I really did enjoy going out on the Himalayan. Thought it was a great bike at a, at a good price as well. And this is pretty much following the same formula. It is cheap and cheerful. You're getting more than what you pay for. Royal Enfield are bringing out some really well-priced bikes. A lot of people can actually afford them. Unlike some of the other manufacturers that are charging the world. 
Royal Enfield is really keeping the prices down, which is good. Uh, the exhaust has got a nice little growl to it. Nice little bit of popping going on as well. I do like that. Going back to the the Himalayan, because I will be comparing these two because they are pretty much the same bike <laughs> with uh, some obvious little design tweaks. I like the Himalayan. I did have issues with it just cutting out on me, which I'm told is a characteristic of this engine, certainly until it's warmed up a little bit. Now this bike I have let run for a, uh, probably about 5-10 minutes while I was getting myself all ready so I've not had the same issue with this <laughs> oh. Growling exhaust Pretty much flat foot but not quite I just can't get my heels down But it does feel a lot smaller than the Himalayan I don't know whether it's just the tank not being as long or you've not got the wind protection I don't can't quite work it out but uh, it does it does seem to be a little bit smaller this of course is a bit more road biased than the Himalayan because we've got that smaller front wheel and the suspension on this is noticeably harder as well. I have found it is, it's not uncomfortably hard by any stretch, it is actually really comfortable. I do think this looks a hell of a lot nicer. I mean, you let me know what you think in the comments, because I know everybody has got different tastes, but personally, I think this is a nicer looking bike than the Himalayan. It does have the Royal Enfield the version of the sat nav which i just don't like it's a great idea in theory my problem is i've never actually been able to get one to work just i don't know what it is i just i don't know whether it's my phone or the way i'm doing it but i just never seem to be able to connect to them so they are kind of pointless for me where's the car park so took it on this car park just to see what the manoeuvrability is like slow speed and no issues whatsoever it's, it's a small bike and it feels like a small bike it's nice and easy there doesn't seem to have loads of weight in it so it's it is easy at slow speed so no issues with that whatsoever that'll do us that'll do us that'll do us yeah.